On this episode of Travelog, we head to the secluded paradise of Bami. We discover why its people have isolated themselves from the rest of the world. Get a taste of the local drum culture and learn to fish the traditional way. Get caught up in the excitement of a weekly market outside the village and make our grand exit through a fantastic cave. Only on Travelog. most incredible entrance I've ever seen. A place hidden in the mountains, a place not even in English guidebooks, a place that you can only reach via a tunnel in a cave, and a place that's considered the Chinese utopia. This is Bame. I'm Turan, and welcome to Travelog. True to form, the isolated village of Bame is very difficult to get to. Arriving in Kunming in southwest China, we had to drive 500 kilometers to reach Guangnan County near Vietnam. Heavy fog along the way meant it took us two days to get there. And even then, there was another 40 kilometers to go before we finally arrived in Ban. All right, so there are a couple of ways you can get to Ban Pei Village. All of them involve uh, taking you to Fali Chun, which is the closest village there. And you can either take the uh, public transport, the buses that come every hour or so, but it completely depends on traffic. You can hire your own minivan, or you can take the public minivans as well. There you go. Alright, I'm going to try my luck with this one. I'll see you guys in Fali Village. Bame enjoys a subtropical climate, but it can still get quite cold in the mountains. Right, this is Bali village and uh, you have to make up the rest of the way there either by foot or by horse, but if you look over there, that is Bame village. Finally, the last leg of our journey. Sitting here on this horse-drawn cart, I can imagine that the people who originally discovered Bame might well have come by the same means of transport. This is bloody incredible. You know, it's, it's probably the best time to swear right now, but I won't because we're on TV. But Jesus Christ, look at this place. You have to go to this huge cavern, this, uh, this limestone cave, when you enter Bame. That it takes about 20 minutes from the entrance to the exit at the other end. And every day the villagers go through this one path. There's no other path. You can't take any road, there's no highway, you can't drive in, you can't walk in. You have to take this boat. Can you imagine that? Well, it's getting pretty dark in here now, so luckily I've brought my flashlight along with me. I'm not sure if it's any good. Oh. Probably not any good. You've got a gap. In the middle of this cavern, I can see the light shining through, and it kind of feels like I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it kind of feels like you're seeing some kind of utopia that you're going to reach quite soon. And in Chinese, there's actually a description for Bame, which kind of translates to a utopia, and that's exactly the same kind of feeling I'm getting right now. Around 1600 years ago. A poet famously wrote about the Taohuayuan, or Peach Blossom Garden. He described an isolated and peaceful village where people live simple pastoral lives. Their ancestors had arrived there hundreds of years before to escape the dangers of warfare, and now the residents were living unaware of the outside world. The only way into the village was through a narrow cave. As you can see over there, that slit of light, that should be our entrance to Utopia. 
If this is the entrance to Bamay village, our utopia that lies at the end of this cavern. And sorry, I just can't wait to go. <laughs> oh my god, that's Kane village. I can't believe it. This is the traditional drunk culture and uh, they're going to stop you when you cross this bridge and you must drink two cups of this wine that uh, they've made themselves at bottom up. Mm. Tastes great. Smoky, just like whiskey. You may go you got too much. Yes, I want to buy The villagers belong to the Zhuang ethnic minority, people with a strong farming tradition. They choose to lead simple, self-sufficient lives, and thanks to their isolation from the outside world, their traditions have been largely protected and preserved. <laughs> the bridge's roof not only provides protection from the elements, it also helps to keep their traditional beliefs and customs alive. Okay, so this is the traditional drung style bridge my lovely guide there was telling me about. And uh, if you look out here, there's this river that splits into two different branches. The right side, I'm told, is for women, and the left side is for guys. And uh, it's a bit chilly now, but in summer, when the villagers finished working out in the fields, they'll come out into this river and bathe together, fully in the nude. And uh, it's something that you'll only really find in the most indigenous villages, the kinds that haven't been touched by the outside world. Okay, so my guide tells me that there are quite a lot of guest houses here in Bame, and this one used to be a villager's home which has now been renovated into a guest house. Oh, uh, nice, nice. It's, uh, it's pretty simple, but it's quite nice in here and uh, everything looks very clean. And they've actually got a television there. And it might not sound so surprising to you, but bam, I only very recently got electricity. And from the looks of it, I might even have an ensuite bathroom as well. Okay, nice. I've actually got a shower in here with, uh, with cold and hot water. And hopefully, this actually... Ooh, ah, it does work. Okay, I can take a shower tonight. Uh, hopefully, with that kind of drip. But uh, anyway, I think it's time for me to have a bit of a break. Uh, where's my water? I'll see you guys in a bit. <laughs> On this episode of Travelogue, we head to the secluded paradise of Bami. 
we discover why its people have isolated themselves from the rest of the world. Get a taste of the local drum culture and learn to fish the traditional way. <laughs> get caught up in the excitement of a weekly market outside the village and make our grand exit through a fantastic cave. Only on Travelog. Burme owes everything to its river. It's what led to the place being discovered, and it's the means by which people enter and leave. It feeds the crop, livestock, and people. Everywhere you look in Burme, you'll find equipment for extracting its water. If you look at these water wheels, regardless of whether they're huge or small, they're everywhere here in Bame and they're used to irrigate the fields. And if you look at the design, this design hasn't changed for hundreds of years, ever since the beginning of Bame. However, the river can't provide Bame with everything. Here, all the women are expert weavers and there's a loom to be found in almost every house. Weaving is a skill that Drong people have traditionally excelled at, and it's helped Bame get by without having to rely on trade from the outside. Nowadays, with the increasing contact with the outside world, the villagers make their own clothes less out of necessity, and more as a way of keeping their traditional skill alive. Not bad. Okay, so a bit of a misunderstanding there. In Chinese, four and uh, ten, ten uh, are pretty much the same, so make sure you know which one they're saying before you buy anything. But even so, I think ten RMB for something like this is pretty worth Tradition is everywhere to be found. <laughs> Most of the women here were brought up playing this game, and it remains their favourite pastime. <coughs> so this was the ball I was uh, trying to kick earlier, and the nicest thing about it is, if it breaks, you can just grab any of these kind of leaves growing by the river and uh, make a new one. So that's self-sufficient entertainment for you. For us city stickers, sunset tends to mean the start of a long night ahead. But for the people of Bame, it signals the end of a long day. Right, so this huge banyan tree is kind of considered the guardian tree here in Bame. And uh, <laughs> I've actually run into the village elders gathered there smoking on their huge pipes. And I've heard that every once in a while the elders will come here and discuss important events here in Bame, kind of like a Roman Senate. So I'm pretty lucky to have run into them today. <laughs> yeah. Just like in their ancestors' time, all the major decisions in Bame are still made by a council of elders. From this spot under their sacred tree, they preside over the future of their secret world. But on days when the rain just won't let up, you can sit back with a cup of tea, listen to the sound of the rain outside, and drink in Bame's secluded beauty. When you're in a place that's laid back and as simple as this, there's not much you can do in the evening. But I think probably the best thing you can do is to sit in front of a fire like this and just kind of let your mind wander as you take in the surroundings. <laughs> so 
uh, every Monday there's a market outside Baomai village in Fali village and it's incredibly important to the people here because they'll get all of their additional supplies from the outside world over there and seeing as it's Monday I'm going to see if I can join them as well Ooh. It's a pretty busy day as you can see and uh, there are hordes of people coming out and I've actually had to commandeer one of their boats because there's not enough space and uh, I'm sitting kind of close to the edge so hopefully this boat doesn't rock too much and make me fall in and we're off and this is pretty nice I'm coming out for the first time with the locals and uh, we'll see what I can find at the daily market in, oh no sorry at the weekly market in Fali village these weekly markets are vital for sustaining Bame's economy but they're much more than just a source of supplies. Traditionally, these markets have been the place to go to hear news about what's happening in the outside world. For generations, Monday has been the day on which this isolated village exposed itself to the modern world. And for me, it's an incredible feeling to be a part of that legacy. Oh, so, that was quite a ride. It's quite drafty now, but everyone's excited to finally get to the market, so let's see if we can get something good to eat. Many of Bame's residents are keen to embrace the modern world, but this is made difficult because of its inconvenient location and because its selling point as a tourist destination is that it's an unspoilt utopia. But things are changing. The younger generations have to leave the village to go to school, and many then go on to jobs in the bigger cities. There's only a certain amount of vegetables that you can grow in Bame, so coming here is actually quite useful to the villagers as they can get a lot more variety in their foods. Apart from getting some essential shopping done, many villagers come to the market because it's simply a lot of fun. Here, they can experience relatively exotic things, and this can only fuel their desire for more contact with the outside. Ah, the people here love to eat spicy food, so if that's not your thing, you're probably going to have a bit of a tough time here. All right, so this is all tobacco that the uh, locals have thinly sliced and uh, they, I think they take this and they stick it in these huge pipes that are filled with water, kind of like with shisha, this kind of incense stick to put it in and burn it and suck on the other side. Here it goes. <laughs> Remember, when you smoke this, you must place your chin firmly on the opening and suck and uh, not let any air inside. Otherwise, you won't get that feeling. Heaven. Heaven. This is mine. From now on, you'll see me <coughs> on every one of my journeys carrying my lovely pipe. All right, I'm going home with my days. This is proving pretty fun. I think I'm one of the villagers now. With the day shopping done, I head back to the guest house for a completely organic lunch. Given the sustainable lifestyle here, there was no surprise to discover that everything that went into our meal was personally raised or grown by our host. This is how meals are eaten in Bame. There's no need for anything fancy, just a fire, a wok, and something to put your food on. Staying in the guest house, eating and drinking just like the villagers, 
It's a great way to experience family life. <laughs> All right, so with net in one hand and basket in the other, you can probably guess what I'm going to go do next. It's fishing and one of the main sources of food here in the village. So if you come here, it would be nice if you can actually help out the villagers in their catch of the day. this is the price I pay for this. Christ! <laughs> I hope I don't catch pneumonia and die. Down to the I think all I caught was rocks. Sit down, I'm dry, ma. Fish over there, net over here. Yeah, 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 yeah! I caught a fish. Let me, let me run towards you. I caught a fish. I caught. Ah! Oh, Christ! I caught a fish, and that's my dinner for tonight. This tiny but lovely little fish. I've learnt an incredible amount of things in Bame, but there's one thing that has eluded me during my stay here. I'm about to leave Bame village, but there's one more skill, one more essential skill I must learn. And that is to row this long boat. Every single villager, every single family has one of these boats. And to become a proper villager of Bame, I must learn as well. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, it's a piece of cake. Just don't turn around. So, I've had an excellent teacher. All he did was push me into the river. And I have now learnt to row. And with any luck, I'll not have a collision with these boats, which might be a bit of a tight fit. Oh, okay. I failed my test. But at least I can row. Ah, there we go. For me, Bame is charmingly honest and genuine. The people here provide for themselves and are content with what they have. And for now, their idyllic world remains untouched, innocently tucked away inside their ring of misty mountains. Alright, so this is it, I'm going to leave Bame and uh, we came in by boat and now we're going to leave by boat as well and this is my buddy, Lawet, which translates to always bent <laughs> and uh, he might not think it but every time I see him he always reminds me of a certain someone and he's our regular Chinese Snoop Dogg <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to As you can see, it's actually raining now, which is quite symbolic for me, actually. We're heading towards the exit.
just like how I entered Bane, I must now leave through a cave on the other side of the village. And I've had an incredible time here. And I feel like I've been accepted as one of the villagers. Over these last few days, I've had a real taste of life here. And I now really understand why Bame is considered the Chinese utopia. I really like this honest and simple kind of life, but as with all good things, our experience must come to an end, and I now must leave Bame. I'm Taran, and I'll see you on another episode of Travelogue. <laughs>